So we finally reached the seventh habit of our highly successful milking routines. And that habit happens after we're done actually removing the milk. And that's focusing on managing the cows after the milking units are removed. So the most important thing that we can do to manage those cows after the milking unit is removed is to do an excellent job at post-milking teat dipping. Now post-milking teat dipping is a highly adopted practice that is well known to result in the production of high quality milk by minimizing the development of new mastitis infections. It is fundamentally one of the most important things that is done well on any farm who desires to produce high quality milk. Now there's some old research that has really demonstrated that. Um, back before post-milking teat dipping was highly adopted, there were some comparative studies done between farms that had adopted uh, teat dipping and farms that didn't. And, and the use of teat dipping reduced somatic cell counts by about 70,000 cells per, per uh, ml. So it's not just enough to, um, to say that we're post-dipping cows. What we really need to do is make sure that 75 to 90 percent of the teat skin on 90 to 100 percent of the teats are covered at the completion of every milking. And that's a hard job because that has to be done on every teat of every cow at every milking. So this is something we typically need to continue to assess and to continue to train the milking technicians about the tremendous importance of this step. Consultants and other people often ask me, what's the best way to evaluate the effectiveness of the teat dipping program? And what we found over the years is that the best place to evaluate the effectiveness of post-milking teat dipping is not in the milking parlor. The best way to evaluate post-milking teat dipping is to go to either the return lane or actually into the group where the cows that have been most recently milked are returning to and actually take your digital camera, a little scorecard out there, and count the number of teats where you've got complete coverage of that teat skin. Again, we recommend 75% of the teat skin needs to be covered on at least 90% of all the teats. So other aspects of the post-milking process uh, that we need to monitor are to ensure that the cows exit calmly from the milking parlor and that they return to fresh feed in the barn so that they remain standing for at least 30 minutes after milking that parlor to give that teat sphincter time to close. And then after the cows are gone, we also want to ensure that the milking technicians do a good job of making sure that those teat cups are cleaned and dried before they're put on the next cows that will be entering. So let me reiterate the seven habits of highly successful milking routines. The first habit is that cows are calm, clean, and well handled before the milking process ever begins. The second habit is that cows are properly grouped to minimize the possibility that teats of healthy cows will come in contact with infected milk from the udder of a subclinically infected cow. The third habit is that the milking technicians use a consistent pre-milking cow preparation. And the fourth habit is that the teats are dry and clean before that milking unit is ever attached. The fifth habit is to ensure that the milking units are attached in the proper time sequence and in the proper manner. And the sixth habit is that the units are removed properly when milking is completed. And then finally, to complete the process, the seventh habit of a highly successful milking routine is that the cow's teats are dipped and those cows return to a clean and dry environment to minimize the possibility of new infections ever developing.